Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I hope to bounce back from the tragedy of the previous episode, though it's still weighing quite a bit on me. Uh, and I'm going to do that by attempting to send over a sample return mission to Mars. Now I'm not entirely sure it's going to work out the first time. Uh, there's probably a lot of stuff to work out on this one because we have to not only land it but get it back and I haven't actually done that before. I haven't landed something on Mars and returned it to Earth. So that's going to be complicated and probably needs a little bit of work. But let's take a look at our contracts to see what kind of funding we can have. There's this perform atmospheric scans on Duna, Mars in other words, and I've already checked the tracking station. These two locations are pretty close to each other, but it'll be hard to hit both of them. This one wants pressure readings in flight below 12 kilometers, and then this one wants the readings on the surface. So that's, that's tricky, especially since the surface readings probably, it's got to be a very narrow location, and I can't do a precise landing on Mars, uh, not with the kind of fuel margins I've got. So, but we might as well try it. Yeah, we might as well try it. Failure will cost 78000 most of the advance, and we'll take a hit on reputation. But, yeah, we need something to go with. There's not much else as far as potential missions to pick up. We already have Science Day from Space around Mars, if you will. Uh, so, But we don't get any extra advance for that. We will be able to complete that at least. Okay, so on that note, let's go to VAB and take a look at the vehicles. Okay, so I've decided to split the mission into two launches, and that's actually because when I tried to put it all on one launch, it turns out that it crashed the game whenever I brought it out to the launch pad. So I couldn't launch it on one launch, so there'll have to be two launches. Uh, it looks like I have a built-in limitation on how big a rocket I can build before the game crashes. And such is the way of things. But, uh, yep, uh, so this is the return stage. This is what's going to bring the probe back. And so the probe is going to have to dock with this. This will do all the maneuvering. And it's got a service propulsion system, so there's the Apollo service propulsion system. reason I picked this is because I know it can restart, and that's very important. And it's not uh, using any cryogenic fuels, so we're not going to have any loss of fuel like that. And, of course, it's going to be a very long trip, so we don't want anything that is going to have uh, fuel boil off. And uh, we've got the Saturn instrumentation unit here, so that uh, that'll take care of control. And, in fact, it'll give us local control, as it did over the moon. So we won't have to worry about the signal delay. And so it's sort of an uh, iffy way of going, but uh, in any case, I've made sure to put enough in terms of communication to at least uh, so make sure that that is a thing and uh, we also have plenty of solar power and of course once we get to Mars it's going to be diminishing returns from those solar panels but uh, we've got aerozine configuration on here ooh we have another tech level no I, I, I think tech level 5 is the highest we have that plus is just fooling with me but uh, yeah we've got uh, everything configured to aerozine and N204 and that's because that's the fuel that the service propulsion system uses. There's a 43 ton return stage and uh, that I've decided to use the Anorixa rocket and that is um, well it's not really an Anorixa rocket because I've gotten rid of the third stage of that rocket. Uh, it's it's that rocket because we've only got one J2 here instead of two which is what the Shakti rocket uses but we do have four boosters which uh, the original Antarixa rocket did not have but otherwise it's using the F1 as well so yep it's sort of like this I think I need a few more launch clamps except uh, we've only got one there so let me get some launch clamps on so this is the less costly part of the launch which is why I'm sending it up first We've already time warped to the correct phase angle for transfer to Mars. That is not a problem. So there we have it. So after this we'll launch the probe itself. The lander, I should say. Not, not just the probe. Probe is understating it a bit. It is a lander. And return vehicle. 
Okay, so all this has to do is get it back to Earth afterwards. And uh, it's pretty heavy for that, but it might also need to do some maneuvers, like the mid-course plane change, and also maneuvers around Mars itself. Okay, so after I've checked staging, let's save this and launch. Okay, here we go, and here is the details of our transfer. Uh, the alarm has already triggered, so we'll be a little bit off from it. We have to have the rendezvous happen in Earth orbit first and all that. Uh, we're probably going to launch this one into a lower orbit and then the actual lander on a higher orbit and have this one rendezvous with it. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, 3644 meters per second is what I expect as far as the transfer, though we'll have margin for a little bit more than that. And you'll see that once we get the other rocket out. But anyway, here we go. F1 light and launch. Now this rocket has plenty of thrust weight ratio. Could have dumped some more delta V if I wanted to change the stages up a bit. But I decided not to do that. So uh, daylight of course as you can see. Let me just make sure we don't need too much ambient light right now. Don't even know if it's doing too much yet. Okay, uh, we need to start rotating very quickly. Doesn't look like... I, wait, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like I have separatrons on the boosters. I used the same sort of configuration as I had with the... with the Shakti rocket, which had the boosters pretty darn close to body, but they never hit. I, I'm hoping I, I'm not being too overly optimistic there. We're really forcing the issue on the pitch here. And again, that's because high thrust to weight ratio, we really need to rotate quickly. This is actually a nice looking launch so far. Overheating on the decouplers, I'll hold it at this pitch then. Still got 18 seconds left, that's quite a long time. Wow, what's going on? Is it just the decouplers? Ah. Well, it doesn't look like I'm in the best frame of anything right now. All right. Well, let's tone it down on the on the thrust on the boosters, I guess, and then try again. It sucks not being able to have a nice, decent launch because the decouplers overheat. And, you know, it was looking good for all intents and purposes, except for these little guys. So, I guess, and I haven't tweak scaled them, by the way, just for you to know. I guess we will, uh, we'll lengthen the burn time and thereby reduce our thrust to weight ratio on the way up. That, uh, uh, you can see, uh, it was originally 90 seconds or so. And as you lengthen the burn time, you can see the delta V, the total delta V gets goes down because it's carrying the boosters for a longer period of time, which I don't want. But uh, we do need, we need them. Maybe I should just make them smaller, I guess. Well, that uh, knocks our delta V down a little bit, but it definitely brought our max thrust to weight ratio down. I don't know if it's enough though. It's pretty severe heating. Will I, I want to have the pitch go go close to the way it did before, but I guess that's not going to be a thing. I guess I'll have to make it steeper. Alright, let's put some Sceptrons on the tops here. Okay, so those when those separate Hopefully we'll clear these a little bit more convincingly. I'll put uh, put sets on the bottom as well. All right, so this is the slightly less powerful one, and uh, let's get going. Let me make sure that we're lined up with the moon reasonably well. Okay, well, 0.36 will have to do. We have to launch another one after this to meet up with this, right? So, anyway, here we go. All right. Off we go. So this time I'll go a little bit steeper and then we'll have to flatten out once we uh, dump the boosters is the best solution I suppose. 
Okay, we are past the speed of sound, continuing on. But uh, we know what part is going to cause the most trouble, so I'm not gonna say it's a good launch so far. Until we get past booster separation. We've got overheating now. Still 16 seconds. I'll hold it here, even though this is not the best pitch to be at at this stage. I'm gonna stage him. Oh. Oh. Great. Well, I guess the logical solution is to make the center heavier. That'll certainly slow things down. It'll give us more delta V as well. But uh, it's increasing the burn time on the F1, which is not supposed to burn that long. Uh, but I'll go all the way up to 4 minutes, which is nowhere near what it's supposed to be. I'm also going to move the boost. Oh, I think I've got uh, RAM issues right now. It's not playing nice. Yeah, so I'm going to go up to 4 minutes, which is way off from what... Uh, the F1 was supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to be 2 minutes and 50, 55 seconds kind of thing. Gotta move these down. Hmm. Well, that's not a very high thrust weight ratio at SEP. Can't argue that that's a problem. This is a bit ridiculous, but... Okay, well, we'll go with it. Let's try this one more time, but let me restart the game because I sense that it's going to have issues. Okay, here we go again. Throttle up, SAS on, F1 light, and launch. Getting further and further off from the intended time frame. Now, just to make it clear, even though I'm not using Engine Igniter, I'm still following the rules. So, the F1 only has one light to it. So I can't shut it down and restart it. So I could have, uh, of course, slowed the rocket down by shutting off the F1 and then uh, separating the boosters, but then I wouldn't be able to restart it according to the rules. Oh, so it doesn't throttle. Okay, going extra steep this time. Well, there's been a costly bunch of losses. We're certainly not going nearly as high or as fast as we were previously. That's because of the larger body. With the F1 burning for longer than it should, but... If that's the solution... Now well, here goes the uh, decoupler overheating again, even at these speeds and with this height. But well, we've only got four seconds left on them. Okay, set. Whoa, why are they tilting in? I thought I had those... those firings so that they'd tilt out, but oh well. Anyway, they're clear anyway. Definitely having a bad rocket day. So this is not on a nominal trajectory. Okay, we'll separate the fairings now. Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. First engine out, set. And J2. Okay, J2 ignition is good. We actually have a lot more delta V on the launch stages than we were supposed to have. So that's a little bit off.
Anyway, six more minutes. And up higher than I want it to be. Let's see now, solar panels are not action grouped, are they? No. Okay, I made a little bit of a mistake on the inclination, so I'm correcting that a bit. But we're getting to orbit here, so I need to turn back. This will be, this will have to be where it is. Okay, 260 by 222. Again, higher than I wanted, but I guess that'll have to do. Uh, we're not going to use this stage to help us rendezvous, I don't think. It's a J2. It's got one, one relight at least. But it's not as good as using the service propulsion system. So I'm just going to ditch the stage. Well, no, let's keep it just in case. I'll have it hang around. Alright, so I'm going to now try and launch the actual lander and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so here we have the Mars sample lander on the Shakti N and it's in because uh, in here we have four engines instead of two. If you remember we used to have two RL-10s but now we have four and that's because this stage is much enlarged as well and that's because it's gonna have to push both this and the and the return craft all the way to Mars right now you see it's reading 6614 meters per second in 15 minutes and 30 seconds but uh, it's going to have much less than that once we attach the return vehicle and I'm not entirely sure how much it will have actually um, we'll have to see I did some calculations but not enough probably there's a lot of uncertainty as far as the Delta V stuff here but uh, the lander itself is uh, complicated it uh, actually has some asparagus staging uh, these uh, these guys stage first then these and then the center continues on up that's in order to get at the more than 4,000 meters per second of delta V in order to get back off of the Martian surface. It also has these kick rockets, SRBs, in order to get off the ground in a hurry at first. And of course those stage along with the lander legs on the first set to drop off. Uh, otherwise I'm still limited to one kilonewton thrusters because I, uh, I would, this would be a lot simpler looking if I had the lunar descent engine or ascent engine, either one would be make it a little bit less complicated, but anyway, this is the capsule here that's going to be returned back to Earth, and so it's got a heat shield here. You notice that the the docking mechanism that it'll use to dock with the return vehicle is on a decoupler, and below that we have the heat shield, the goo container, which is the main sample we're trying to return, the probe core, and a reaction wheel. The probe core is going to have to deal with its own electric charge, but really uh, that is only for two situations. Uh, so there's no solar panels on here. It's going to have to uh, run on internal power during the landing and takeoff, and then it's going to run on internal power once it gets back to, and uh, it'll have to do so during rendezvous as well. But rendezvous will mostly be on the other side, and then it's going to have to be on internal power when it's finally returning back into the atmosphere of Earth. That might not be such a great idea, we'll see. Now this is all relying on the on the Saturn instrumentation unit down here. Once it docks up with the return vehicle, of course it'll have the return vehicle's Saturn instrumentation unit, but once we try to land on Mars it'll be on this unit, which means we'll no longer have internal, uh, internal control. We're going to have to rely on communications in order to control this so that's going to be and so we'll have signal delay as well that's going to be interesting we have a lot of parachutes these are all parachutes this uh, these are main parachutes and these are drogue parachutes it still probably won't be enough to slow it down completely around Mars so we're carrying a little bit more than the fuel I think we need to get back into orbit uh, though not by much and it's tough for me to estimate exactly how much we need to get back into orbit. Different sources say different things. Around 4 kilometers per second is generally the idea, in which case we have about uh, 300 to 400 meters per second extra, but I suspect that I would take more than that, in which case we probably are in a bit of a 
danger here. But uh, this is a first attempt, so I'm just going to try it out and see what happens. Uh, now, when I uh, express concern that this mission might not work, I wasn't thinking that the launchers would blow up on me. So this has already been a lot worse than I expected. We'll have to see, but otherwise, except for the enlarged uh, third stage here, the rest of this is the Shakti rocket that we have come to, well, I wouldn't say rely on, but at least it worked. And uh, no modifications down here, including no additional separatrons, so hopefully they'll separate cleanly as they have before. I'm relying on that. The thrust weight ratio does not get very high, as you can see. So, yep. Alright, let's try it out. Hmm. Somehow the rocket seems darker than usual. Not sure what that's about. But let's target the mission that we're going to attempt to rendezvous with. Seems like a reasonable thing to do. It's already over here somewhere, I suppose. Oh no, it's, uh, there it is. Okay. So we'll have to correct that 1.3 degrees. But otherwise, uh, let's try this out. Throttle is up, SAS is on, uh, ignition of the F1, and launch. Now you'll note on the ablative shielding I didn't put a whole lot of it on. I'm not too sure whether that's a good idea or a bad idea, but that was to keep it under the mass limit of the controller. So I couldn't put any more than that because the controller could, you know, the little uh, Ranger Mark III core or whatever we got on there couldn't handle any more mass. So it was at its limit. Oh, I should have mentioned one other modification is that I made the the J2 stage shorter and uh, put some of that into the upper stage and re you remember with the previous launches with the Shakti rocket the J2 had a little bit left over that we used to start off our moon transfer with so I aimed to not have any of that left over this time around Okay, probably staging the fairings at the same time as booster sap is not a good idea. Going a little bit steeply on the same sort of concern I had with the previous launcher. Maybe I shouldn't do that. I think we'll have to wait here. I want to be in line with the prograde vector when we have booster sap. Okay, booster set. I pressed spacebar, didn't do anything. Booster set. Okay, real tight. But they're clear. Okay, let's uh, let's get turning here. But not not that much. Well, I guess it'd make more sense to have this one in lower orbit. I wonder what I was thinking. Again, bad rocket day. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll go into low orbit with this one, and maybe we'll make some burns with the RL-10 stage. It doesn't have to do anything like around the moon or anything, so we just uh, need to reserve a single ignition for the transfer, and that's it. So it can it can do some work uh, getting us closer to our, our return stage. Okay, I'm going to go for fairing step here. Oh, they careened off. All right. Jeez. Well, all the real antenna business and solar panelry is on the bottom of the third stage, so. Okay, here we go, set. And second stage two J2s now that we're on this rocket. With uh, two of them we do have roll control so it's actually reoriented to this zero here. A 
Looks like we'll have to burn the third stage in order to get to orbit. That was not my intention, but the trajectory wasn't that great. Okay, here we go, last 30 seconds of this burn. I guess I'm just gonna pay attention to the rendezvous indication here. Hopefully I'll be making orbit and getting a good rendezvous, but it's tough to say. Uh, the target's orbit is 260 by 222. I'm right in the middle of that when it comes to my apoapsis right now. And I'm, uh, I'm gonna leave it at this angle to get a little bit more time to apoapsis because the next stage isn't quite as powerful as this one is right now. We're approaching two G's here. Delta V situation isn't great, but um, I guess we'll put up with it. Okay, set. And the RL-10s. So, I mean, they don't have... They have about, uh... Well, uh, between... About point... Well, let's just say 0.36 Gs right now. You can see the vertical speed going down rather quickly. Relative inclination, we can't fix any more than this. It's about 0.25 from here. Our ascending and descending nodes are quite far away from here. So we will be heading back down for a little bit, but that's normal. Now the return stage is 40 tons, so yeah, I don't know how the Delta V is going to work out. If we can make the full transfer to Mars with this stage, then we can keep it uh, attached and uh, use its solar panels as well. Not that, uh, I mean, they might be blocked by the solar panels on the other side. I don't think so, though. If we can't make the full transfer with this stage and we have to use some of the return stage in order to continue the transfer, then, then we can't keep this, obviously. I've uh, shut off the the tanks on the payload, by the way, so if you're wondering why we don't seem to be having our full Delta V reading, that's why. I didn't want uh, the payload's uh, fuel to be used when we use the RCS thrusters here. Okay, well, I have to say the closest approach distance, the way it's closing, and the way our periapsis is closing seems like we might have a way to uh, burn straight into an approach maybe I'm hoping we just need to periapsis above 130 uh, no the closest approach is gonna be not in sync darn yep we hit the minimum and now we're increasing our closest approach Okay, well that should help us catch up. Doesn't really show that there. I hope it's not gonna be too long a time. Sorry, position there. Yeah, I don't know. It might be might be a while before we catch up to it. Okay, well, I've had enough excitements and explosions today, so on the bet that I I'm in no fit state to try and dock these two portions of the mission up today and uh, trying to avoid doing that on a day where I've had other disasters uh, so let me let me hold off on that until the next episode but you get the idea of the mission outline here and we'll see how it turns out next time alright so thank you for watching if you enjoyed this episode please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time